Good afternoon. We'll call to order this finance committee meeting on June 4th. And uh, staff, what do we have in store for us today? So, good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Tomaszewski. I am the treasury manager with the uh, finance department and with me today is Mark Sewell. He's the accounting manager and today we will be presenting the third quarter financial review for fiscal year 2019. So for the presentation, first I will be presenting the general fund revenues and then uh, Mr. Sewell will take over and go through the general fund uh, expenditures, the enterprise funds and the proposed budget adjustments for the, for the third quarter. So first I'll start with the general fund revenues, but before I do, I just wanted to uh, remind your committee that a couple weeks ago, Mr. Samario and I presented the uh, general fund major revenues and multi-year forecast. Um, and as part of that, we talked about the fiscal year 19 revenues. So I'm not going to go through those in as much detail to save you having to listen to the presentation twice, but of course you can always ask questions. So this first table is a summary of the general fund revenues and it's broken into three categories. We have taxes, other revenues, and fees and charges. So for the annual budget for the year is about 154 million compared to our year to date budget. So at third quarter, the budget would be about 108 million. We've actually received about 105.7, which leaves us in a deficit of about 2.4. Now this is just a snapshot at third quarter and just to put a little context to this, we don't anticipate that this will be in a deficit by year end. So at year end we're anticipating in totality we will probably have a surplus of probably somewhere between one to two million dollars. And then I just wanted to remind the committee that in comparing taxes to prior year, the 30% increase is due to the Measure C revenues. So this next slide, if we were to look at this first line on, uh, on the summary taxes and we look at the variance of 287,000, we break that out into a little bit more detail uh, based on those revenues for on this slide. So again, same format, sales tax, measure C, property tax, and so on. And these are the revenues that we presented in a lot more detail uh, with your committee. So. I'm not going to go through these in a lot of detail other than I just wanted to point out that uh, Measure C and sales tax, we're anticipating those will be anywhere from one to two million over budget by year end. And property tax, I wanted to point out because at third quarter, we've only received about 53%, but that's consistent with the, it's, it's based on how the county pays us. So we've already received another 14 million since these numbers and we're anticipating another three or four million by year end. So we anticipate that we will be slightly above budget by year end. Uh, UUT and TOT, they're still coming in flat, um, but I'm not gonna go into a lot more detail other than to say that by year end, we anticipate that negative 300,000 to be closer to a surplus of three or four million in tax revenues. This next slide is the other revenues. These are licenses and permits, fines and forfeitures, franchise fees, and so on. These are, est are coming in about a little, little over half a million below budget at third quarter. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of those. So our fines and forfeitures are down about 427,000. This is mostly due to parking violations. So there's 13 positions, and I think of, of those 13, four of those have been vacant at various times throughout the year, um, and that, that's the impacts when we don't have the officers out there uh, issuing parking citations. This is the impacts to that revenue. And then uh, on the flip side of that, we have intergovernmental revenues. These are going to be our mutual aid revenues, which can vary uh, from year to year, and it's based on fire activity, uh, fire estimated or budgeted about a million and I think they're estimating about 1.8 million by year end. So again, I, well, I, I didn't highlight uh, miscellaneous revenues. We see there's a variance there as well. Those are mostly one-time revenues, so it's the timing issue. Those will be at budget by year end. 
but to put a little bit of context to this of the half a million or 534,000 deficit we're anticipating that'll be somewhere between 8 and 900,000 dollar deficit by year end. Did you have a question? Yes, please. Use of money slash property? Yeah. So that's mostly interest income. So it's interest from our investments. We had uh, we project those or we, we budget for those based on uh, cash balances. And then when the interest comes in from our, um, our interest, the pool of our interest income, it's allocated out to departments based on their percentage of cash balances. And the general fund had a couple loans to the other departments. I think airport might have been one of them. So it lowered the cash balances slightly. So even though we're receiving more interest income as a city based on our investments, a smaller portion of that went to the general fund. Great. Thank you. And then I did want to just quickly point out, so we're not talking about a large dollar amount, but the licenses and permits. Uh, we see about a 40% drop from last year, and that's based on because last year we had, we received about $112,000 in uh, one-time money for cannabis application fees that were not programmed or expected this year. So our last slide, or my last slide f uh, for the revenues, is the uh, departmental fees and service charges. And at third quarter, those are about one and a half million below budget. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of those. So community development is down about 465,000 at uh, third quarter. And this is mainly due to decreases in new development project applications. And then uh, public works, we see about 700,000 deficit at third quarter. And this is mostly due to the engineering division. There were some vacancies there. The engineers charge billable work orders. Uh, when those positions are vacant, there, this is the impact to those revenues. There is a corresponding salary savings as well. And then I just wanted to, uh, on, on reimbursements, I just wanted to point out this 280000 Again, this is one-time uh, activity that will be at budget by year-end. When we're looking at this, projecting out for year-end, we're anticipating this will stay around one and a half to $2 million deficit by year-end. So when we're looking at that on the first slide, they're at third quarter about $2.4 million deficit, when you look at the three categories in total, we're anticipating, again, about a $1 to $2 million surplus by year end. And that's it for my presentation. Unless you have any questions, I'll hand it over to Mr. Sewell. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair Dominguez. Mark Sewell, Accounting Manager. I'll continue now with a review of the general fund expenditures after nine months of this fiscal year. There are kind of three common threads when you look at the um, expenditures in the general fund and indeed the enterprise funds, which we'll come on to in a minute after nine months. And really it's the weather that we had over the winter. Uh, a lot of rain impacted a lot of the, the um, enterprise funds in terms of their revenue and their trading, and, and we see that. Um, we also see salary savings from vacancies is a common theme across many of the departments. And also when you're taking a snapshot after nine months, there's a timing difference sometimes. Sometimes things happen earlier in the year, sometimes they happen later in the year. So those three themes kind of play into impact across most of the funds. So this table I've got um, firstly shows you all of the departments that reside within the general fund and those expenditures for a total annual budget of $166 million. What we do is we take a, a, a seasonal approach to try to carve that budget into what should it be likely after nine months by looking at the last three years average costs at different times and then we compare our actuals at that time. And you can see the general fund as a whole at, at, after nine months is showing a $3 million favorable variance, i.e. lower expenses. What I would just say is that the ne very next column shows you encumbrances of $3 million. And again, they are commitments that a city has made that we have yet to receive an invoice for. So it's very likely that that variance, if all of those invoices had come in, would then be pretty much zero. So we're kind of on track after nine months. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll go into a little more detail. And I wanted to highlight the police department first. That's our largest operating department within the general fund. Just over one quarter of the general fund expenditure is in the police department. And after nine months, that department is reporting savings against that seasonalized budget of just under $600,000. 
Why is that? Well, as, as Ms. Tomaszewski already has mentioned in terms of the revenue impact, there have been a number of vacancies um, all year, and at third quarter there were 10 sworn vacancies. But I can share the, the good news is that most recently when I, when I checked in, a lot of those vacancies have now been filled, and there are actually a, a much smaller number of vacancies across sworn dispatch and parking enforcement. So I think there's been some um, good strides made there to try to get towards full recruitment. Following from that, we see the fire department, which again, a very large department. Um, and that's actually after nine months reporting more expenditure than the uh, seasonalized budget. And again, that relates to something that Mrs. Tomaszewski mentioned earlier about the um, mutual aid revenue that the fire department receives. And it receives that, of course, because it sends firefighters to um, other um, operations outside of the city's jurisdiction and that comes at a cost in terms of overtime and, and vehicles and all that kind of thing and so while that's showing an, an adverse variance to budget it is more than offset by the revenue that it's generated in the mutual aid and then finally oh, there we go and then in finally in terms of public works again we are seeing salary savings from the engineering division we're seeing the impact on the revenue there um, and those vacancies of course lead to salary and benefit savings across the year. So again, at this point in time, after nine months, about 3.1 million. I'm happy to pause for any questions on general fund or, or carry on into enterprise funds if you'd like. Keep on going, thank you. Wonderful. So I've got two charts for enterprise funds where we've picked out seven of them for you, the, the most material ones. Um, and I'd like to talk about three in more detail. This chart is very similar to the last one, except what you see here is revenues and expenditures and therefore the net for that fiscal year. Um, and of course, enterprise funds are required to fund all of their operations from revenues that they generate. So if I start first with the solid waste fund, you can see there that both the revenues and the expenditures are actually uh, lower than their budgets, and they kind of offset lower revenue and lower expenditures. Um, and we mentioned this at mid-year in the sense that the FY19 budget assumptions were set for the revenue to be too high, and there were also timing delays in terms of when that revenue was realized. Now that has the corresponding impact of then lower expenditures because the contract with Marburg is essentially a pass-through. So the two are in sync. And uh, the, the guys in solid waste are projecting that it's going to be a balanced budget by the end of the year. Moving on to the water fund. We can see here that while the revenue is, is shown half a million dollars higher than the year-to-date budget, and again, this is based on the seasonality of, of when revenues tend to come in across the year after nine months, that is higher, yet water sales actually have been lower than budget. So that's been contributed by a couple of, um, I'm not suppose one-off, but they are kind of annual revenues, not volume-driven revenues, um, where, whereby the water department received some rebates for prior year um, expenses through the joint powers uh, agreements with lo other local agencies and have been actually treating more water through the Cater Water Treatment Plant and therefore that's generated more revenue. But in, in general, because we've had a, a wetter winter, the water sales haven't been as high as they perhaps might have been planned to be. And then the second line there where you see the expenses, significant savings here at uh, third quarter, $6.4 million. Most of that variance is related to timing. Yeah, there are some costs which are anticipated to occur before the end of this fiscal year, of one of the largest ones being a $3 million payment to the company that runs the desalination plant. Uh, there had been some discussions around that cost all this fiscal year, and those were resolved, and so we're anticipating that that will now be paid before the end of the fiscal year. And then a myriad of other um, savings across a number of other cost lines, which on a $70 million budget can add up to be a reasonably large number. And then finally, I'd like to just mention the airport fund. Again, this, uh, the airport fund, as mentioned in, at mid-year, is having a very, very good fiscal year. The budget was increased over prior years, and you can see that after nine months, revenue is trending just slightly above at $21,000. But I did want to just make a, a reminder that it's representing 15% growth from last fiscal year. So although it was budgeted, it, it still has been achieved. So it's still, I think, uh, a worthy recognition. And again, you see that there are expenditure savings at third quarter driven by salary and benefit savings. But also, you know, uh, uh, some debt was refinanced earlier this fiscal year, which led to just, uh, just under $400,000 in uh, savings for this one fiscal year. 
um, on more favourable rates and a uh, parking contract was renegotiated down at a lower cost than was budgeted. So the airport fund is doing pretty well financially. And that's the end of my presentation for our enterprise funds and then we have a few budget adjustments which cover all funds if you'd like me to continue. Any questions? Please continue. I will. Okay, so within the report and, and within the, the council agenda packet, there are um, 25 or 30 different budget adjustments, and I didn't feel that perhaps we'd need to go through every single one of those. So I've just taken some of the more material ones out for, for discussion for now, but I'm happy to answer any questions on any of the others, and we have representatives from the departments here should you have any specific questions. So the first one I'd like to just share with you, and we both of both Jennifer and myself talked about this in our presentations. This is the impact of the mutual aid activity being higher than budget, and so therefore to be able to ultimately have the budget authority to have paid the firefighters, we are requesting an appropriation of, of new revenue um, that relates to the mutual aid activity of four hundred and six thousand five hundred sixty dollars. That would be within the general fund fire department. We also have a one-time uh, tidy up, I suppose you would want to call this, whereby we have within our miscellaneous grants funds, um, let me start again. A, a couple of years ago, we had one miscellaneous grant fund that dealt with all of the miscellaneous grants for every single department. And it was decided that it would be more transparent and clear to generate and create funds for each of the different departments. So now PD has a fund, Parks and Recreation has a fund, Fire has a fund. And at that time, all of those projects that were easily identifiable were then appropriated into those funds. And there was a, a small balance of $129,000, which remained um, and was very, very likely to have been built up over a, a large number of years. And we believe uh, in doing some investigation that this, this money really was um, inadvertently charged to the general fund over years. And so therefore we're recommending an adjustment here to clear the miscellaneous grants final balance and, and transfer that into the general fund to close that fund for good. The next adjustment, this is similar to one we, we brought at mid-year and relates to the Cabrillo Pavilion project. Um, this is the, uh, one of the final pieces of funding uh, for the construction of the Cabrillo Pavilion, which is, as everyone knows, um, very much underway and um, hoping to be completed this year. The uh, $2 million here represents a loan from the Fleet Replacement Fund, which has uh, a significant cash balance and available funds to be able to support this, whereby it's going to be loaned to the Measure C Fund, which will ultimately pay the construction costs for the building um, and then be paid back at a 2% interest rate to the Fleet Fund. So the Fleet Fund generates a small return and the, the construction of the pavilion can continue. Here we have uh, an adjustment to tidy up the um, delay to the fiscal year 2018 sales tax that was reported from the state. Um, in previous meetings, we've mentioned that there were some issues with some new software that the state had implemented, which meant that we didn't receive uh, a sales tax in a timely manner for fiscal year 18. And of course, with the new measure that was passed for the 1% Measure C, we're very careful to make sure that we portion what is rightly Measure C off and transfer it to that fund. And so $22,587 is the final amount to make sure that we true up all of the sales tax proceeds that relate to Measure C for fiscal year 18. And then moving into enterprise funds, the uh, Water Capital Fund had, uh, has a specific reserve for water main replacement projects that they'd like to appropriate to continue with that program. There have been uh, a lot of main water breaks, uh, mainline breaks, um, apologies, and um, some, also some favorable bidding results recently. And so they feel that it's a good time in the market to um, continue that program and to use those reserves and, and continue to repair our water main lines. And then item X there is a request from the water fund to transfer $330,000 from the cater treatment plant capital project to the South Coast Booster System capital project and the Public Works Department feel that this allows for a greater transparency with regards to the accounting for the joint powers agreements because there are certain costs which are shared across a number of um, other agencies and so therefore they want to just make that a little cleaner in their, in their capital books. And in terms of the internal service funds, 
uh, a couple of years ago, uh, a decision was um, approved by council to set up an energy efficiency um, portion of the facilities fund um, for investments in projects that will ultimately yield energy savings. And so this is a request to appropriate 152,000 for that purpose. This is savings that what the fund had from prior year, which they'd like to put to good work. And then you see on, on adjustment AC, that's the other side of the $2 million loan to measure C fund for the Cabrillo Pavilion. Of course, we need to then require an appropriation for that fleet fund to be able to transfer that to measure C. And that's the end of the adjustments, and we'd be looking for the Finance Committee to recommend and accept the fiscal year 2019 interim financial statements for nine months ended March 31st and approve the proposed third quarter adjustments for fiscal year 2019 appropriations and estimated revenues as detailed in the presentation and the attached schedule of proposed third quarter adjustments. Thank you. Thank you for that report. There's no public comment at this time. No one in the public is making a comment, so we'll move into committee questions or recommendations at this point. Mr. Friedman. just want to thank you for the report. Uh, it seems like everything is balancing out um, at the end, so I'll move the uh, staff recommendations to forward this to council. Thank you for the motion, and uh, it does seem like everything is looking good, and that's good news. Um, it's always difficult to balance the level of service and revenues and expenditures, but uh, looks like we're on, on a great path. So let's uh, go ahead and take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you very much. And with that, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you.